Tim. Welcome to Watch Want and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Reference 15400 ST 41mm in stainless steel. This watch is available for purchase on our website watchyouwant.com. If you like our videos please subscribe to our YouTube channel Watch you Want Inc. Now you can see on my wrist 16 centimeters in circumference so 6.3 inches in circumference. The watch wears with the modern stance and contemporary proportions of the 2012 to present reference 15400. Now this is distinct from the Jumbo in two ways. First and foremost, the Jumbo is a 39. This watch here is a 41. Moreover, the Jumbo is a full millimeter thinner than this watch is 9.8 millimeters, but neither one of these is going to hang up any kind of dress cuff or long sleeve. The bottom line is, for daily use, this watch bridges the gap between the 39 millimeters of the Jumbo and the 42 to 44 of the Big & Burly Full Bore Sports Watch Royal Oak Offshore, and it's a great middle ground for your only watch. Neither a dress watch like the Jumbo nor a hardcore sports watch like the Offshore. This one wears easy, it wears comfortable, and it wears versatile. With the combination of a black dial and a white metal, versatile steel in this case, this watch is welcome in any scenario, in any attire. Now part of the pleasure of wearing any Royal Oak is the Royal Oak bracelet. You can see this is not just a tapered bracelet, it's a fully integrated bracelet. Every single link individually tapered. Unlike some watches that feature a few tapered links and then a straight set, every single one of these links has been made to taper and finished by hand to complete the visual and ergonomic effect. And that's the difference between a machine-made watch and a hand-finished watch. It's what you're getting when you pay the premium for something like an Audemars Piguet, and it's the substantive difference between something like an AP and a machine-made watch at a lower price point. And the bracelet is a highlight, with each of these individual links being finished to an outstanding degree. Each one finishes po features polish, features camphoring, features straight-grained finish. So you have contrasting finished as well as multiple facets that catch the light and play with it, almost like a metallic gem. Now, Gerald Genta, who designed the 1972 original, of the Royal Oak, the model that would come to be known as the Jumbo that lends its direct DNA to this and the companion model, the 15202. He designed the Royal Oak series to read as an integrated bracelet. He was a jewelry designer. He designed many watches, but orders of magnitude more articles of jewelry. And so the Royal Oak reads as a continuous sweep of bracelet material, not so much a watch on a strap or a bracelet. And the bracelet integrated with the lugs of the case is integral to that effect. So you can see the quality. You can also feel the quality as the undersides of these links are functionally finished just as the above is aesthetically finished. The functional finish of the underside consists of these large evacuated channels between the links themselves. So these channels will neither pull hair nor pinch skin and that's critical to the silken feel of this bracelet on the wrist so it feels as good as it looks. Another element that's a real highlight of the latest references of the Royal Oak is this double deployant twin trigger clasp. Now you can see beautifully finished on the inside with contrasting finishes. It's also very substantial with all parts being milled out. It has sort of the feel of something like a contemporary Rolex clasp or the famed Omega Seamaster milled out clasp. Historically, the Royal Oak, the traditional one, not so much the Offshore, has been more of a dress watch than a hardcore sports watch, but it edges a little bit closer to the sporty end of the spectrum with the substance of this latest clasp design. Not only is it exceptionally low profile when closed, and it closes with a very satisfying snick, but in the hand you can feel this is a bigger and burlier construction, up to the task of daily wear. Now the other nice thing about this watch is, since 2012, with the discontinuation of the reference 15300, the 400 that I have here has been a bigger watch. 41 millimeters, that's telling in two ways. First, there's the presence on the wrist. It's broader, it has broader shoulders, it has a wider stance, it's just a burlier, more substantial, more visually high impact watch. Bridging the gap between the 39 millimeter jumbo and the offshores, it's a nice watch for every occasion. Now I've highlighted a silver dialed variant of this model on the channel before, but I wanted to highlight this one just to show how the dark dial really changes the character. It's definitely more masculine, it's definitely more aggressive, and I think it tilts the watch toward the sportier end of the spectrum, even a few more degrees than the increase in the case size. 
But besides case size, the other change that's been brought about by the increase to 41 millimeters is the way the real estate of the dial has been opened up. Now you can see that the dial is broad, it's open, it's not cluttered or busy, and that's helped by the 41 millimeter span. You can see that compared to the 15300, the indices have been extended all the way out to the edge of the inner bezel wall, so they're longer. They have more span to them. They are more graceful in so many ways. Beautifully polished, applied white gold. They match the white gold hands, and they are faceted, so as you move it through the light, the light plays on those surfaces dynamically and animates the dial. Other elements that are worth noting are the introduction of a monotone, non-framed date window at 3 o'clock. So it's spread out, it makes better use of its real estate, less crowded, but it's also more integrated because the previous white date disc that would jump out from that spot at 3 o'clock is more discreet. It's there when you want to look for the date, when you need that information, but it blends in and doesn't break up the composition when you're not looking for it. Nicely done by Audemars Piguet. The combination of the longer indices, the unobtrusive date, and of course the extra sheer space opens up this dial, lets it breathe. It's more elegant at the same time that it's also more masculine. That's a double whammy that's difficult to achieve. Audemars Piguet does it well. This watch also features a lot of additional in-house pedigree. Audemars Piguet's been bringing the Royal Oak elements, the dial, the movement in-house over the last decade or so, and this watch really completes the circle. Previously, Stern Creations would have created the dials on a pantograph machine. They're still made on a vintage-style pantograph, just as this style of dial would have been made as far back as the 19th century. So the traditional elements of horology and artisanal construction are still there. What changes is that it's now done all in-house at AP. So an AP through and through. That's the dial, that's the case, that's the bracelet, and yes, that is the movement. Now AP's own in-house caliber, 3120. The previous JLC-based automatic has been replaced by a full 280-piece, 40-joule, Audemars Piguet bi-directional winding automatic. Now, not only is it in-house, but it's more modern, and that starts at the rotor itself. You can see it is engraved 22-carat gold with the crests of the Audemars and Piguet families on it. So, they want to remind you they are still family-controlled and have been since 1875, never sold out, they're not owned by an umbrella company, and they're governed as sort of a family jewel. The rest of the movement is equally like a jewel, but very tough, make no mistake. The rotor itself rides on unlubricated ceramic bearings, so they effectively have no service life limit. Unlubricated, they're very efficient for energizing the 60-hour power reserve, but because they are ceramic, they never need to be replaced, they will not wear down. That removes an important maintenance item that can be an Achilles heel of conventional automatic watches. Bidirectional winding, so there's no unidirectional wobble, that unweighted direction where there's no strain on the winding train on a conventional unidirectional watch. Audemars Piguet shows smoothness and bidirectional winding and regains some efficiency by use of ceramic bearings. Other modern elements include the full dual anchored balance bridge. You can see the balance beating just below my thumb. The dual anchored balance bridge on both sides, that's like the construction of a contemporary Rolex movement. It braces the balance more substantially and helps to attenuate shocks and vibration that might be encountered in the course of daily wear. It's also a fixed regulator with variable inertia balance blocks on the balance itself, which basically means that to adjust the timing of the movement, the watchmaker will move those screws into or out of the balance one on each side corresponding to the other to change the moment of inertia. He won't move a little lever or stick index on top of the balance to change the timing of the watch. By fixing the index and putting the blocks on the balance, it means that you can't accidentally change the timing of the watch by moving that index when it's shocked. Now, other elements of this movement are thoroughly contemporary. Everything from the polished screw heads to the Cote de Genève to the gorgeous prolage on the base plate represents the expectations that people have developed for watch movements in the era of display case backs. And I have to say, while we tout tradition in this industry, and I am trying to, give you, trying to give you the best possible view of the movement, while we tout tradition in this industry, the bottom line is that since the early 90s, the late 80s, and the advent of sapphire case backs, finish has improved measurably. And today's Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, Jeger Le Coult, Vacheron Constantin watches are the best finished the industry has ever seen. And that more than holds true for this reference 15400 Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. Also features 
stop seconds so when you pull the crown, you hack the balance, you can synchronize it precisely to a reference timer. Again, with a 60 hour power reserve, a nice stately traditional 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate, that gyromax style balance. This is a technologically advanced movement that nevertheless is beautiful to look at in the tradition or better of past high horology. So this watch combines a lot of the best of the past with the best of the present and a few sneak peeks of the future. Bigger, bolder than a traditional Royal Oak, it's also a little bit more masculine, substantial, and durable than the traditional 39 millimeter jumbo. You can fall in love with it and, if you like, take it home on our website, watchyouwant.com.